Supreme Court is disappointingly denying former Trump White House advisor Peter Navarro's bid to get out of jail while he appeals his sentence on defying a January 6 committee subpoena. This is the second time the court has denied him. The first time in March came from Chief Justice John Roberts. Navarro then brought his appeal request to Justice Neil Gorsuch, who referred the matter for a full court vote, resulting in another denial. Joining us now to discuss all of this and more is author and filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh, thanks for being here tonight. My pleasure. Great. So what's the deal from the Supreme Court on this for Navarro? It's strike one and now strike two. You know, my guess with the Supreme Court is that they are facing some monumentally big cases and probably multiple Trump cases making their way uh, up to the Supreme Court. Of course, they're dealing with the immunity issue right in front of them now, but I can foresee other things coming their way sometime between now and uh, November. If Trump gets convicted in New York, he's, you know, there's, he's put in jail, there will be, I think, emergency appeals uh, made all the way kind of up the ladder. And so my guess is the Supreme Court is making a sort of a tactical decision. You, you don't like to think of the court operating this way. You want them to look at each case on the merits and look at the Navarro case in isolation by itself. But I don't think that they do that. I think they're probably saying, well, let's stay out of this one because we've got, quite honestly, bigger fish to fry. You know, and it's so sad. I mean, what is going on to Navarro and he can't get any lifeline here. I mean, we saw him turn himself in last month, March 19th, I believe it was. And it, it's so heartbreaking. And when, and when you hear him talk about his case and the way that the judge in that situation handled it, it, it's heartbreaking, right? Because he's talking about how, you know, when they say he defied the subpoena of the January 6th sham committee. Oh, no, the horror. He talks about saying that he truly does believes that he did not have the authority to comply with it because of his duty and his obligation to the, you know, the executive privilege that, you know, President Trump and the White House and his staff and advisors and all the rest have. Do you think words like duties and responsibilities and obligations and also phrases like don't stab others in the back, it's almost like we've forgotten all about that almost in this day and age. And so poor Navarro, who actually upholds those virtues, they basically threw him in prison for it, I'd say. We're dealing with a highly uh, politicized judiciary, and um, the this is not a problem we'll get out of all that quickly because these judges are there. They have tenure on the bench. They appear to be not in just one court, like, okay, the D.C. Court of Appeals, but nowhere else. No, they are actually in many places around the country, probably more densely in new in blue America than in red America, but you find them everywhere. Uh, I think what this means is that we're going to see a lot of injustice, not just uh, Peter Navarro, but many other cases. Now, it may be, and let's hope that history looks back at this and, and, and sees this as a kind of distorted time where this kind of injustice became somewhat systematized. And maybe one day Peter Navarro can look back and smile at this, but I'm sure he's not smiling right now. No, you're exactly right. And so obviously, you know, you put out your, your new film, your new documentary last year on police state, right? Talking about how weaponized all these systems are. And so if President Trump is able to overcome when it's not just the deep state anymore, it's also the police state. It's every institution, right, is captured, the long march of the institutions. It's a lot to try and overcome. Also the fraud that we know they're going to be pulling off this year in 2024. But if President Trump should be able to overcome all that, I think there's that chance because so many people, even many Democrats and centrists and others are so fed up with the left that I don't know if all the meals, election meals and vote rigging in the world can maybe overcome it. I don't know. We'll see what happens in November. But should President Trump take office once again, I mean, I'd like to see him pardon left and right all those who've been ground up in the gears of this really evil national security security state, this police state that's been weaponized against true American patriots. So, you know, people like Navarro, people like the January 6th defendants and all the rest, I think that we should see mass pardons. But again, whenever it gets talked about on CNN or MSNBC, you see the fear in their eyes, right? They, they talk about this, that, oh, President Trump, if he gets into office, just wait, he'll let these scary patriots out of prison who've been dealing with so much. I mean, how insane is it that the left wants us to fear this, what they call, they say, this retribution that'll come if President Trump gets back into office? 